want to do is just briefly go over this, and we're going to go over this in greater detail. But what you're looking at is a document I put together that basically explains that telemarketing is a science. All right, there's a method to the madness. And when you think about it, it's pretty logical. Now, at first glance, you know, someone just gives you a script and says, have at it, and that's your job. Okay, there's some truth to that. But if you, you know, if you dig a little bit deeper and understand the big picture, you'll understand that there is a science to it. And the science is this. It's simply a numbers game. The more calls you make, the more people you speak with, the more people you pit, the more people you speak with, the more pitches you make, the more pitches, the more applications, the more applications, the more money. It's no more complicated than that. All right. So when you dig down a little bit deeper, each agent should do between 500 and 800 calls in a day. Now, are you going to sell all 500 to 800 calls? No, absolutely not. In fact, your goal should be only five calls out of your 500 that actually matter, 10 per 1,000. All the other calls that you make are complete garbage. It doesn't matter if you made a thousand calls and 990 of them were answering machines. It doesn't matter if 990 of them were dead airs. It doesn't matter if 990 were just not interested or did not qualify. There's only 5% of your calls that actually matter. It's what you do with those 5% of your calls that makes all the difference in the world. You have to learn how to take control of the opportunities that are presented to you. Now, if you think about it, I'll offer you an analogy. Now we've all gone fishing in our lives, right? To me, fishing is the most boring sport there is, period. You wait around for hours and hours and hours waiting for a fish to bite. Everybody you're with is bored out of their minds. They're lackadaisical. They're just looking at each other, whatever. Now, all of a sudden, that second the fish bites on somebody's pole, doesn't matter whether it's on your pole, doesn't matter if it's somebody else, everybody gets excited. Starts running around, screaming, whatever. That's much like telemarketing. You wait around all day to find your opportunity, and then you get excited, or you should. So, at the end of the day, only five calls actually matter, and you need to take advantage of them. How do you do that? Well, the first is... You You have to capture their attention 15 seconds at a time. The goal is not to get through the script as fast as possible. The goal is to fight for 15 seconds of their attention span. Because someone only has 15 seconds before they get bored with you. So if you divide the if you divide the pitch into 15 second segments, your goal is to get to the next section, not to get to the end of the script. If you get to the next section, your goal is to fight for 15 more seconds, and then 15 more seconds, and then 15 more seconds. And soon you'll find yourself at the end of the script with a sale. Now, 
I've heard some of the recordings. It sounds to me like you guys are all going off the reservation. You're all doing what you want to do. The first thing I want to tell you is you must have a hard copy of the script in your hand. I'll say it again. You must have a hard copy of the script in your hand. You cannot pitch from a computer screen. And there's a number of reasons for it. Psychologically, you have the script in your hand. It acts as a security blanket. You feel more comfortable. You feel more confident. Number two, if, you're, if you have the script in your hand and you're following it with your fingertips, you will never lose your place and always remain in control of the conversation. So when someone interrupts you with a question, comment, or a concern, you can address their question, comment, or a concern and go directly back to where you left off. And you know where you left off because your fingers are marking where you left off. So without missing a beat, you can go back to where you left off and control the conversation. Nobody wants to hear unnecessary pauses and dead silence while you find your place. Nobody wants to hear you subconsciously saying, uh, 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 hang on a second, uh, 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 let me find it. Uh, uh. Nobody wants to hear that. And you're certainly, if you do that, you're certainly not going to keep their attention. All right. So do us all a favor. I know it's I know it's a whole lot easier to read the script off a computer screen. I'm telling you, it does not work. Or at least does not work as successfully as if you have the script in your hand. All right. The rest of this stuff we'll go through in, in the next few days and go and drill down and explain what that actually means. All right. The next document I'm going to show you is a tips, openers, sales tips. The science is, as I said, you have 15 seconds to keep their attention. But it's the first four seconds of the call that makes the impression. In those four seconds, the customer is determining, are you sharp as a tack? What does that mean, sharp as a tack? It means are you quick? Do you understand? Do you know what you're talking about? Is this person confident and energetic? Does this person sound professional? That's what they're deciding in those first four seconds. Now, keep in mind, we're telemarketing. And everybody in the world hates telemarketers. I do, you do. And so does everybody that we're calling. So you need to get past that hurdle. You got to be better than the 499 other telemarketers that are calling them every week. What separates you from the other 499 people? These four seconds. Now, if you don't make that impression, being sharp as a tack, being confident, energetic, and sounding professional, they're going to hang up on you, or they're going to make up excuses or create a dumb question. Now, part of being sharp as a tack means 
that you're the one that is controlling the conversation. Now, part of controlling the conversation is just that, controlling. So if they ask you a question, you have the choice as to how you handle that question. Now, I'm here to tell you, I do not want you answering those questions. Any question, doesn't matter. Unless you know that this person is worthy of your time. How do you know if this person is worthy or not? Well, they must pre-qualify. You must know if they own the home or they rent the home. You must know what type of home they live in. Is it a single family residence, townhouse, condo, mobile home, manufactured home? What type of home do they have? And whether or not their electric company, their bill is over $100. Unless you know that this person meets all three qualifying questions, then they're not worthy of answering their questions. Doesn't matter what their question is, because otherwise you're just wasting your time. And it's your time that is your biggest asset. I don't care about the customer's time. It's your time that I care about. Now they could ask you, how'd you get my number? They could ask you, where are you calling from? They could ask you, what's the name of your company? What's the website? Doesn't matter what they ask, unless you know the answers to those three questions, do not answer their questions, ignore them. You need to be the one controlling the conversation. Now they're asking you questions, not because they really care about the answers. They're asking you questions at this point, just to delay, to figure out a reason why they should not talk to you. And we'll go into that in, in, in detail later on. All right. So in those four seconds, they're determining whether you're sharp as a tack, confident, energetic, and do you sound professional? Now, nowhere in that answer does it say, hi, how are you? They don't care about your personality. They're not wanting to be on your Christmas list or your Kwanzaa list or your birthday list. You're not friends with these people. These people do not care how you're doing. You certainly don't care how they're doing. So don't waste time with pleasantries. It does not matter. You need to jump in as fast as possible. Don't say hello and pause and wait for an answer. Just jump right in because you're on the clock. You have four seconds to make that impression. If you don't make that impression in four seconds, you lost that customer. It's not that they're not interested in solar. They're just not interested in speaking to you. Again, you're competing. These people average 500 telemarketing calls a week. You're competing with 499 other people. What sets you apart? Now, as opening agents, 
you have, we've given you 90 seconds to complete the call. To transfer that call to a closing agent. There is not a reason why any of your calls as opening agents should go over 90 seconds. The script was designed to be done in 60 seconds. That is with a perfect pitch. Now we all know there is no such thing as a perfect pitch. So we gave you 30 additional seconds as a buffer to do it. Now, some of the reasons why a call will go over 90 seconds is because you're letting them control the conversation, answering their idiotic questions. Either your pacing is too slow or it's too fast. If it's too slow, they lose interest and ask you to repeat them yourself. If it's too fast, their brain didn't process what their ears heard and you have to repeat yourself again. Or you're wasting time with pleasantries. Hi, how are you? How's your day? Now, when you ask how they're doing, they're going to answer. And then they're going to follow that with, hi, how are you doing? In which case, you're going to answer. In which case, you just wasted five, six, seven seconds that you're never going to get back in your life. Also, you used up your four seconds. Another reason is because you're not pronouncing your words correctly. Therefore, you're gonna to have to repeat yourself. Or you're not following the script as it was written and you're making up your own script. As we said, the goal is to buy 15 seconds at a time. The goal is not to finish the script. We're gonna drill down and spend a lot of time on each of these different concepts. So, we have a few closers that are on this call today. The reason that they're on this call is not so they learn how to open again, but they get refreshed on the basics. To give you an idea, you could say Tiger Woods is the best golfer in the world. Yet Tiger Woods takes less golf lessons every day. Now, why does he take golf lessons every day? He's the best golfer in the world. He takes lessons every day for two reasons. One, to keep him from getting into bad habits. Or B, if he found himself in bad habits, to get out of those bad habits. So he takes lessons every day. Now, when you look at your script, the first thing you see is the rules to succeed. Now that's basically an affirmation of what you're gonna be doing for the rest of the day. So the first thing you should be doing is reading this to yourself to basically psych yourself out for the long, hard day that you're about to have because you're gonna get into a war, right? You're gonna be dealing with rejection all day long. You took a thousand calls, you're gonna have 995 rejections. That makes for a long day. So you got to psych yourself out. So you got to act like there's a pregame warm-up. We all played sports. What do you do before you play a game? You stretch. You get warmed up. You get the blood pumping, right? I am the professional. I have the advantage because I have a game plan and the tools 
and the bait to succeed. I'm gonna follow the script and deliver it in a conversational manner and not sound like a used car salesman. Going back to the training, the customer is just a fish. I know more than they do. If I remain in control, stay focused, confident, and energetic, they're going to agree with me. In every conversation, someone is selling someone. Either I'm selling them or they're selling me. I want to be the one selling them. We will hit this idea and concept very, very hard in the future. The goal is to capture is capturing their attention 15 seconds at a time, not to finish the script, creating bite-sized pieces that they're going to be able to swallow. The goal is not to sell them solar. The goal is to sell them the idea of solar and get them get the appointment. It's not what we say or ask that matters. It's how we do it that matters most. When you're asking a question or giving a rebuttal, if you explain what you're doing and why you're doing it, 95% of the time, people are going to give you the answer that you need. You guys need to be able to recite that to yourselves each and every day to psych yourself up. Now, I'm not asking you to do something just for the sake of doing it. I'm asking you to do it because I do it myself. Now, I give you a timeline. You pretty much should follow this timeline. You have 20 to 25 seconds to start question one. You have 30 to 45 seconds to finish question three, the electric bill. 60 to 90 seconds to finish the script. It's pretty simple. Now, we talk. So, got to follow the script. You got to follow how it's written. The questions. There are no shortcuts. You must ask the questions exactly how they are written. Now, let me try something here. I'm going to play Touchstone, Agent 5802. I just took these random recordings. I'm not picking on you guys. I'm just using these recordings to illustrate my point. All right? This is not me making this up. This is you guys. Hello? Hi, uh, ma'am, this is uh, Trevor Morgan. I'm calling from uh, Sunlight Solar. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thanks. God bless you? you more. I'm also doing good, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, basically, the reason I'm calling... Okay, so he hasn't said anything of substance yet, right? Elijah? Yes, sir. So far, it's just been the greetings. So we're 16 seconds into this call. Right? Yes, sir. This person's attention span is four times over the limit, right? Yes. Because their limit is four seconds. Four seconds, they're determining, are you sharp as attack? Are you exciting? Are you worth listening to? And does this agent know what they're talking about? Well, obviously, the agent is exciting, right? He's energetic. Cool. Is he sharp as a tack? We don't know yet. Does he sound professional? We're not sure, right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> we are uh, just reaching to the homeowners, and we are giving consultation that how you guys can actually reduce your electricity bills up to 60%. So this is like a win-win opportunity, and there is no upfront cost and no money out of your pocket expenses for you. And uh, like my job right here is not to sell you something, but rather we are here to educate you on possibly switching to solar options. 
and see if you qualify. But uh, when if you do qualify for this program, so then we will send a professional and no cost and no obligation proposal for you, and it will show you exactly how much you can save or even earn by going solar. So first of all, I just uh, want to make sure that are you the homeowner, ma'am? I mean, what address are you calling about? Uh, the address. All right. So what happened, Elijah? So he skipped through or totally, I would say not even skipped, but ignored the script, not going through it. And there was too much information and not stopping at all to let the customer even understand it. So the information that he's providing is basically taken out of context from my script, yes, right? Completely yes, different sir. meaning, right? Yes, sir. All right. What else? Aside from that, the speed, I would say, was a bit too fast. The The pronunciation of the word was not clear at times. Okay. What else did you notice? Uh, the script, the speed, and again... Was it's he using the tie-downs? Was he using tie-downs? Stop for a bit. No, sir. No. I'm sure that no, makes did sense. Did not ask right? them. Yes, sir. Did not I'm ask sure them if it was pretty right? good or not. Exactly, yeah. sir. All right. So what else? When she asked the question, how did you get my, what address are you talking about? Is that a pertinent question at this point? Is that an important question to answer? No, not as one unless you know the customer is qualified. You need to ignore that one. Right and bring it back to the script controlling the conversation right yes sir here's what happens because he ignored he answers this question yes i've got is uh three six two oh one oh six avenue and uh the zip code is three three seven six two is that right no nope i have not lived in what happens if it's not the right address, Elijah? Then the customer is just going to hang up. Because there's nowhere to go, right? Yep. Nothing positive is going to happen as a result of that, right? Yes, sir. I'm at home since 2011. So you. 2011. Okay, not a problem. Right here, I'm just uh, here to make sure that you're the homeowner or not. I am not. Yeah, that's not my Oh, home you're anymore. not a homeowner. Oh, you don't own a home anymore. Okay, ma'am. Right. Uh, thank you, then. You do not qualify for this program, ma'am. I'm sorry. Have All a nice right. day. Thanks. Bye. All right, so the call lost uh, 138 uh, seconds. Hi, uh, ma'am. This is uh, Trevor. The call lasts 138 seconds. If he followed the script correctly, he would have got that answer A lot faster, for sure. He would have got that answer somewhere between 25 and 30 seconds, right? Yes, sir. So he basically wasted a minute of his life that he's never going to get back, right? Yes, sir. All right. Pretty good at this, Elijah. I like this. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, we're going to try a different agent. Time order, 3103. Hello. Yes. Hey, my name is Jax, and I'm calling from Sunlight Solar. What we are doing is calling people that are interested in reducing their electric bill by as much as 60%. Now, this is a benefit opportunity. There are no out-of-pocket expenses for you. And as I have said, your electric bill with a cut by as much as 60%. Sounds pretty cool, right? Uh, well, we're, we're, um, I have to get approval of doing any of that with my uh, homeowners association. Okay, so, okay, so you, so you uh, want to know more? Well, I'm saying I, I, you have to go through this approval process to do all that, so... Um, it's not, uh, I I just gonna ask you ask, I just gonna ask you three real quick questions. Do you own the property or do you yeah. rent it? Own it. Okay, that's perfect. 
And what type of home do you live in? It's the single family residence, townhouse, condo, apartment or something like that? It's a villa home. It's a normal home, single family residence? There's two homes connected together. Like a duplex. Townhouse. Okay, please stay on the line, so uh, I'll ask my specialist, if you can. All right. All right, so that, that call lasted 137 seconds. What you're looking at is the recording questionnaire that you guys must, your managers must fill out each and every day for each and every one of the agents. So Elijah, stick with me, brother. Yes, sir. I'm gonna have you okay. answer these questions. Did the okay. agent follow the script as it was written or did the agent take shortcuts? There were shortcuts for sure. Okay. Yeah. Where did the agent go wrong in the script? Uh, towards, I would say, when asking about uh, did they own the property and stuff, the line was not fully delivered. You don't say. Ah, he stuff. took a shortcut. Oh, yeah. Do you? And I think he said, "Do you live in a single-family residence?" Yeah. Which is an open-ended question, right? Yes, sir. You guys do not ask open-ended questions. You give choice A, B, A, B. Or C, A, B, C, D, or E. And that's it. What type of home do you live in? Is it a single family residence, townhouse, condo, mobile home, manufactured home? What type of home do you have? He would have said a duplex and eliminate all the wasted time that he experienced. Right? Yep. The, the call lasted 138 seconds. He should have had that answered at probably 40 seconds, right? So basically, yes. he wasted an entire minute for no reason. All because the because, customer all, yes, sir. All because he didn't ask the question as it was written. Yes, sir. Which is the very next question that we ask. Okay. Did the set did uh, did it sound like the script was being read from a computer screen, or did it sound like the agent had a hard copy of the script in his hand? I'd say computer screen. Computer screen, absolutely. All right, how do you know that? Because of the way of the delivery. Because yep. on a computer screen, you have to scroll and all, but in a physical copy that I have in front of me. So you I can, can kind of it. imagine him as you're listening to him speak. You can kind of imagine him scrolling down his computer screen while he's speaking, right? Precisely. Got it. Did the agent capture their attention and sound energetic or bored and sleepy? Bored and sleepy and kind of out of breath, I would say. Yeah. Did the agent sound confident and believable? In other words, did the agent, does the agent believe his own bullshit? No. No. Okay. Not at all. Did it sound robotic or monotone or did the agent sound energetic? Robotic and monotone. Well, at times a little bit all three, right? Yes, sir. He sounded energetic when he shouldn't have been. He sounded monotone when he should have been energetic. Yes, sir. Is the agent rushing through or too slow or using the proper pace? No, not the proper pace. Uh, it was slow. And there was stops where there should not have been. There was times when he was too fast at the beginning and too slow, yes, right? Yes, sir. Did it sound like I was the one delivering this script? Not at all. Does it sound like the agent was speaking at the customer in a conversation or with or with the customer in a conversational manner? It was more of an ad. They were just speaking and the customer speaking was Speaking at just, the customer, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. 
was the agent listening to the customer and responding accordingly? <clears throat> no, considering when the agent said that he lives in a place where the houses are connected, yeah, HOA, then most of the time those are uh, townhouses, especially when he said that the houses no, are that, connected. That, Elijah, that's not true. Again, uh, as I said, I could be wrong. HOA but, stands for Homeowners Association. Homeowners Association. Yes, sir. Homeowners, I'm not telling it for you because I know you know, but for those that don't know, HOA stands for Homeowners Association. What it means is it's in a gated community. Precisely. All right. Sometimes they're townhouses. Sometimes they're single family residents that are all in a gated community. Sometimes it's both. Yes, sir. All right. With an oak HOA, there's a board of directors that run the HOA. And you need to get the approval from them. So they need to get the approval. In most states, that is not, it's illegal for them to deny that. But in this case, why get caught up in the complications of explaining that? Why not just go along to get along? Hey, sir, I completely understand you live in an HOA. Let me let me first just make sure that you qualify so we can go step by step. Fair enough? Great. What type of home do you have? Is this a single family residence, townhouse, condo, mobile home, manufactured home? What type of home do you have? Oh, it's a duplex? Sorry. You're not going to qualify. Click. Would have ended all the bullshit, right? Yes, sir. Oh, Did the agent use all the tie downs? <clears throat> no. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Now, for those people that don't know what a tie down is, your script is color coordinated. What you see in yellow. Those are my instructions to you, the agent. What you see in green, I want you to speed through. Say it as fast as you can. Why? Because I don't want the customer dwelling on those on that on that sentence. The light green, those are tie downs, those are trial closes. They're there for a number of reasons. Number one, it's to give you a chance to pause, to let someone else speak. It's a conversation. You cannot have a conversation with yourself. Otherwise, you're speaking at the customer, not with the customer. You're inviting them to speak, to acknowledge that they heard and understood you. And for you to get an idea of how interested they might be. It's also a trial close. Meaning, does it sound like they might be interested? Well, if you can get them to agree with you throughout the script, you're conditioning them piece by piece to go along with you. So when it counts for them to make the big decision, they're conditioned to do so. As I said, this is a science. Some of it is salesmanship, some of it is psychological. What you see in purple are built-in rebuttals. In this case, I understand you're concerned about your HOA. I'll gladly answer it. I just don't want to waste your valuable time. Let me ask you three simple questions so I know if you qualify or not. Do you own the property or do you rent it? His entire... He wasted a bunch of time where if he just used this rebuttal, he would have got the answer and moved on without wasting any time. Yes, sir. All right, let's try another one. Okay. 
was the agent able to, to pronounce all the words correctly? To a certain degree, yes. All right. When the customer responds with a question or a comment, did the agent use the correct rebuttals and deliver them correctly using the lab's method? No. All right. What should the agent have done differently to get a different result? Uh, first off, the space, uh, more energy in their delivery, use the tie downs and be sharp as a tag to handle the situation, especially when he mentions the HOA, then the rebuttal should have been used where you tell them that I understand your concern regarding the HOA and I will gladly answer it and so on and so forth. And in order to get the... Well, he wasn't going to get a different answer. result, but he could have had, he could have cut mm -hmm. that down on his Cut the time time, time. Oh, yes sir right yes sir the time would have been a lot shorter then all right cool so let's try another one from touchdown 5801 yeah. hello uh, yeah uh, this is hello? uh john from sunlight solar how are you doing today ma'am doing good it was said again sir yeah, uh, ma'am, uh, this is uh, John calling from Sunlight Solars. How are you doing today? Doing good? I guess. I'm doing good. That's great. <laughs> that sounds great. Uh, ma'am, actually, uh, we are call, uh, what we are doing is calling people that are interested in lowering down their electric. So, Elijah, we're basically 29 seconds into this. He has not said anything worth saying yet, right? Yep, so far it's sort of had to repeat the intro and asking them how they were and just basically wasted 30 seconds where they could have been to the first question by now. Now it just so happens there's an old lady that is semi-patient, right? Yes, sir. If he, if he had called me, I would have lost my shit and probably hung up on him five seconds into the call, right? For sure bill as much as by 60 percent so you know this is a win-win uh, opportunity there are no out-of-pocket expenses for you means no extra investment and as i said your electric will be cut down by 60 percent as much as 60 percent so my job is not to sell you anything just to educate you about solar panels so uh before uh, that i want to make you qualify for the program like uh, are you the homeowner Yes, sir, but uh, I, I, I had an appointment. My tax is outside honking. I went out to hang mm -hmm. up because I got an appointment. So uh, mm -hmm. I'll see uh, you Melissa, right now. Like, I just need your uh, three more minutes, then you're good to go. Uh, like, uh, right now, I just want to make sure that you're the homeowner. Is that right? Yes. Uh, and it's a single family house. Mm -hmm. What? What did you say? It's the home you are owning is a single family house, not a condominium. Yes, uh, yes, not, yes. That's great. That's great. House, and according to mm -hmm, <laughs> that's great. And according to my survey, your average electrical bill is more than hundred dollars a month. Is that right? What bill is that? Your average electrical bill for the whole year is more than hundred dollars a month. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, uh, that's a really high bill. As I told you, you can lower down your bill up to 60%. Uh, so far, it looks like you have qualified. Uh, if we can show you uh, how there will be no upfront cost to you while allowing, allowing you to dramatically lower or eliminate uh, your electrical bill completely, would you be interested in finding out more? Uh, well, my tax is hunking. My appointment's already, and I don't want to go late. Uh, can you call me later on, sir, please? Uh, it will uh, not take much of your time, as I told you, like uh, two to three minutes more. So, uh, would you be interested in finding out more? No, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. So, there's a lot it's to unpack there. there. Let's let's answer the questions uh, and see if we can get a, a better idea of what he did wrong, right, or okay. what he did right or what he needs work on, right? So did okay. the agent follow the script as it was written or did the agent take shortcuts and basically go off the reservation and make up his own script? He did not follow the script completely. He took few shortcuts. I would say he didn't follow the script at all. Yeah. <laughs> right? 
Okay. Yes. I mean, let's not sugarcoat it. He made up his own script. Yes, exactly. And it was completely taken out of context, the information. Did yeah. the agent ask the questions as they were written? No. Again, it doesn't matter what you say, it matters how you say it. You can, I could ask you, what's the color of the sky? And you can give me 15 different answers, right? Yeah. I could ask you, do you, what type of, do you live in a single family residence? Okay. Yeah, technically, I guess, but it's really a double wide or it's a manufactured home. Is that the same as single family home? No, sir. No. It really matters how you ask these questions. Did it sound like the script was being read from a computer screen or did the agent have a hard copy of the script in his hand? Uh, computer screen, I guess. And how do you know that? Uh, they had the hard copies, but uh, the way he was pitching, uh, actually he should improve on that. Uh, the tone can be improved and there should be a lot more improvements in the script. But, no, I get, uh, I get that part of it, but... How do you know that he's reading from a computer screen and not from a hard copy? Because he was not following the script, first of all. Secondly, he was uh, taking bit pauses. So it, it, it feels like uh, he was reading from a computer screen because he did not uh, had the focus on the script. Okay, well, I know that he made this sentence sound like it was 30 different words. Right? Instead of the, was it four, eight, nine, 10, 11? Instead of the 19 words that it is, he made it four times longer, right? Completely yeah. skipped, he completely skipped this. And then he basically bastardized this, right? Yeah. In fact, he cut it off like right here, right? Yes. Sir. He forgot yes. this whole section. Yes. Right? Yeah. Completely screwed this up, right? Yes. All right. And as far as the electric, well, he asked, was the bill over a hundred dollars? Is is that even the question? No. <clears throat> the question should be, what's your average electric bill if you took a 12 month average knowing in the summertime it may be higher than in the winter. Yeah. Now, do you know why that question is asked that way? All right. What you guys are doing is as opening agents is In addition to trying to earn money by transferring calls, we're actually giving you the opportunity to earn while you learn. We're training you to be closers while you're doing this. Now the opening script is the is half exactly half of the closing script. So unless you get the opening script down, there's no way you're gonna be successful on the closing side. Now on the closing side, it doesn't matter whether someone's bill is a hundred dollars or more. What matters is how much. We get paid to provide accurate information. Just saying that the bill is over $100 doesn't tell us anything, doesn't tell my client anything. We need to know exactly what the average is. 
within reason. So we're training you to get it right the first time rather than getting into bad habits and have to get you out of those bad habits. Okay. Everybody cool with that? Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So no, the agent didn't answer the questions as they were written. Did it sound like, uh, okay. Did the agent capture their attention and sound energetic or bored and sleepy? Um, it was energetic, I think. Yep, it was. Did the agent sound confident and believable? Um, yep. To some extent, I guess. All right. Is the agent rushing through or too slow or using the proper pacing? Uh, it was uh, rushing through. Mm -hmm. Did it sound like I was delivering the script? Not uh, no. All, all right. Not if not, what needs to change? Uh, he should follow the script, what, what's written in the script. Uh, actually, what he was doing, he was just kidding. Uh, he was just making his own script. Yep. All right. Did it sound like the agent was speaking at the customer or with the customer in a conversational manner? I would say at the customer. Yep. All right. Was the agent listening to the customer responding accordingly? No. Yeah. All right. Did the agent use all the tie downs? No. No. Was the agent able to pronounce all the words correctly? Uh, to some extent, yeah. Yep. All right. When the customer responds with a question or a comment, did the agent use the correct rebuttals and deliver them correctly? Um, to some extent, I guess, but uh, I think uh, there should be an improvement. All right, and you guys can talk amongst yourselves to figure out what the agent needs to uh, needs to work on. All right. Um, so again, what we want the managers to do is to fill out these forms, just like we did today, for all of their agents every day. Now, I'm not asking you to do it for my benefit. I'm asking you to do it for yours and your agents. You can't possibly manage your agents if you don't know what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, and where they need help. This takes all of the guesswork out of it. Now, if you're doing it, I suggest you do it with the agent sitting next to you so you could review it together. I promise. The agent will get past the learning curve extremely faster than if left to their own devices. Why? Because they don't want to get called in front of you and talking about the same things you did yesterday, the day before, and the day before that. It gets old real quick. Yeah. All right. And if you're doing it as a group, nobody wants to be embarrassed in front of their friends and coworkers. Yeah. Because look, there's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to run. There's no, you can't crawl under a desk and hide. It's your voice. This is what you're saying. This is how you're saying it. Right? Right. Now, without these reports and without these questionnaires, if I asked Elijah how his day was, he's going to say, hey, boss, I had a great day. I did five applications. And I say, Elijah, attaboy, and give him a pat on the back, right? Well, come tomorrow when I look at the reports, now, instead of, and he gave me five BS appointments, instead of wanting to pat him, Elijah on the back, I'm looking for Elijah to kick him in the ass. Right? Yes, sir. All right. First of all, what's your name? And wrote my own script. I get it. You got to own the script in order to make the delivery that you want. I get it. However, in this case, 
I did not wake up one morning, say, hey, you know what? Let me get into the solar appointment side of things and let me write a script real quick. That's not what happened. It took me months of trial and error and taking these calls myself to figure out how to perfect this script. Now, the script is the tools of your trade. Just like if you were a butcher, you would have to have the proper knives and know how to use each and every one. Otherwise, you could not be a, a successful butcher. If you were a hairstylist, you would have to know and have the correct scissors and or shaving, shavers, right? You don't have the right shaver or you don't know how to use it, you're not going to be a very successful barber, are you? Or hairstyle. Mm -hmm. Can't be a carpenter if you don't know how to use and have the right saws, right? Yes, sir. The scripts and rebuttals are your tools. You need to know how to use them. and use them correctly. All right, anybody else? Questions, comments, concerns? Is there Elijah here from Tech Setup? So <clears throat> the last recording that we heard, the call ended with uh, the customer being qualified, but she hung up considering the fact she was busy and said to call back later. So as an opener, what should that person do after that? Well, we because don't did not know get because we don't know. We did not get her qualified yet, did we? What was the one, the one thing that he did not ask was about the electric bill. True, yes. He did miss that part off. Now, what was happening was because he was... not sharp as attack, was not confident and energetic, and was not really professional, and exceeded the four seconds to make the impression, she determined he really wasn't worthy to speak to. Therefore, all of a sudden, she magically became busy. Let's think about that rationally for a second. If she was so busy, why did she take a call from a number she did not recognize in the first place? Elijah. True. Curiosity got that part, but she lost it at uh, those points that you mentioned. She was not interested at that point. So I guess right. she was just trying to find an excuse to get away from it. Exactly. She found an excuse to get off the call. See, there are two types of people who are going to answer these calls. Those that are straightforward that will either hang up or tell you not interested and hang up because they're not interested in speaking to a telemarketer. Or you have the people that are not so straightforward, not so honest, and then we'll test you to see if you're worth speaking to or not, and then find a reason as to why not to speak to you anymore. That's why these four seconds are so important. That's why fighting for 15 seconds at a time is so important. That's why following the script is so important. That's why using the tie downs are so important. 
That's why getting the proper pace is so important. Now, the second part of your question, Elijah, about callbacks, number one, opening agents do not do callbacks. Yes, sir. Ever. Because let me ask you, Elijah, what could you possibly say on the next call that you weren't able to say on the first call? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Absolutely right. Number two, do you even know if you should call this person back or not? Do we know if this person was even qualified or not? This one was we don't not. know what our electric bill was, do we? Exactly. Not at all. No, we do not. So it's not it's not worth the callback, is it? Yes, sir, it's not. <clears throat> but she found a reason to get off the call. So in this sense, as I said earlier, in the affirmations in your script at the top, In every conversation, someone is selling someone. Either I'm selling them or they're selling me. I want to be the one selling them. In this case, she was selling the agent that she was busy. Precisely. And to call back. Now, the one thing. I will credit this agent for is he hung in there and at the end of the at the end of the day she she he found out she wasn't really interested because when push comes to shove they'll end up telling you the truth now I'm not really interested don't call me back 